So guys, we are in the book of Jubilees and we are going to be doing a quick study on Passover and how it was first established here in Jubilees with the um with um Abraham and the offering of Isaac. Remember, um God had asked Abraham to offer Isaac on on the altar. We know that he actually tried, but God stopped him. And um, so Isaac wasn't actually offered for those of you who don't know your Bible, but, <laughs> but this gives us the pattern for Passover. And we're going to read starting at Jubilees 17. And we're going to start um, in verse 15. And it says, and it came to pass in the seventh week in the first year thereof in the first month in this Jubilee on the 12th of this month, there were voices in heaven regarding Abraham, that he was faithful in all that he told him and that he loved the Lord. And that in every affliction he was faithful. And the prince, Mistema, came and said before, before God, Behold, Abraham loves his son Isaac, and he delights in him above all things else. Bid him, offer him as, bur as a burnt offering on the altar. And you will see if he will do this command. And you will know if he is faithful in everything wherein you tried him, <clears throat> wherein you do try him. And the Lord knew that Abraham was faithful in all his afflictions, for he had tried him through his country that's one, and with famine, and had tried him with the wealth of kings, that's two, and had tried him again through his wife, that's three, uh, when she was torn from him, and with circumcision, that's four, and had tried him through Ishmael and Hagar, that's five, his maidservant, when he went and sent them away. And in everything uh, wherein he had tried him, he was found faithful. And his soul was not impatient and he was not slow to act for he was faithful for he was a faithful lover for he was faithful and a lover of the Lord. So now we're going to move down to chapter 18. But you see how God had tested Abraham. Basically to try a person is to test them, right? It's like a trial. And in all these things here, God had tested Abraham, and that does give you kind of an idea of how God's character is and what he and how he operates towards us, right? Yes, he does give us tests, and yes, he does give us trials because they perfect our faith in him, and it exposes to us those areas that we have yet to we have yet to surrender before the Lord. OK, even Isaac, his one and only son could be an idol. Right. If you love your children more than God, which is what this prince of Mastema, which I believe he is likened to being Satan, um, is, is basically purporting is that, you know, look, Abraham likes Isaac and he loves him more than you, God, you know, and God is like, hmm, think so. And I think God already knew that Abraham would, you know. God knows all. So we know, we know that God knew that Abraham would pass this test, but he was like, you know what? I'm just going to show you, you know, <laughs> because he knew Abraham would pass. Um, he, he's all knowing, right? So he, you know, he's going to, he's going to shut the mouth of Mastema. We already know how this story ends, but what I want to point out here is the, the setup for the Passover, right? So now let's go to chapter 18 and it says, and God said to him, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, behold, here I am. And he said, take your beloved son, whom you love, even Isaac, and go into high country, the high country, and offer him on one of the mountains, which I will point out unto you. And he rose early in the morning and saddled his ass and took his two young men with him and Isaac, his son, and clave the wood of the burnt offering. And he went to the place on the third day and he saw the place afar off and he came to a well of water and he said to his young men to his young men abide here with the ass and I and the lad shall go yonder and when we have worshiped we shall come again to you and he took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son and he took his hand the fire and the knife and they went both of them together to that place and Isaac said to his father father and he said here I am my son and he said unto him, Behold the fire and the knife and the wood, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering, Father? And he said, God will provide for himself a sheep for a burnt offering, my son. 
and he drew near to the place of the mount of God. And he built an altar and he placed the wood on the altar and bound Isaac with his um, his son and placed him on the wood, which was upon the altar and stretched out his hand to take the knife to slay Isaac, his son. And I stood before him and before the prince of Mestema and the Lord said, bid him not to lay his hand on the lad, nor to do anything to him. For I have, for I have shown that he fears the Lord. And I called to him from heaven and said unto him, Abraham, Abraham. And he was terrified and said, behold, here I am. And I said unto him, lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do you anything to him. For now I have shown that you fear the Lord and have not withheld your son, your firstborn son from me. And the prince of Mestema was put to shame. And Abraham lift, lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, a single ram caught by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Okay, so this is what's important. Let's look at this timing here. If you know your, your, your feast, you would have caught this piece. It says, in the seventh week, in the first year, in the first month of this jubilee, on the 12th of this month, right? When is Passover? Passover is on the 14th of the first month, okay? Three days, right? Three total days. You have 12, 13, and 14, okay? So now let's turn here where, where it says... It tells us here that he takes his son and to hike uh, and, the, and he rolls early in the morning, which is the next day, which would put it at the 13th, right? And they go up and he went to the place on the third day, okay? And he saw the place afar off. And then that's where he goes up to offer Isaac. So if you count three days, you've got 12th, 13th, and the 14th. So here we have in the first month on the 14th day, Abraham offering Isaac to God. So now we establish that, you know, Isaac and Abraham, um, it's like a foreshadowing of Passover, right? We read that in Jubilees chapter 17 and 18, the end of 17 and most of 18. But it doesn't just stop there, right? So now it says, you know, God goes on to tell Abraham, because you've done this thing and you've passed this test, these are all the things that I'm going to do for you. He just basically reiterates all of the promises um, that he he made to Abraham again. Um, but... It doesn't just stop there. So it says, And Abraham went to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt by the well of the oath. And he celebrated this festival every year, seven days with joy, and he called it the festival of the Lord, according to the seven days during which he went and returned in peace. And accordingly, has it been ordained and written on the heavenly tables regarding Israel and its seed that they should observe this festival seven days with the joy of festival? What other festival is there that lasts seven days after Passover? Hmm, right? Unleavened bread, right? So we have Passover and unleavened bread being, you know, Passover isn't being celebrated here, but it's kind of being foreshadowed and established here. Now, this isn't established as something in the heavenly tables that's as something that they do. But but the festival right after is kind of like a place marker for what we will later know to be the festival, the festival, the festival of unleavened bread. And so we, you will notice if you read Jubilees that every single um, feast is established um, in Jubilees before Moses is on Mount Sinai being given 
the, um, the law and the commands and the feast by God. They were already established before him. Okay. So that's what I have for this particular study. Please, 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 guys, if you haven't read Jubilees, you definitely want to dig into it. We will be digging some more into the book of Jubilees, but I will suggest not doing so before you have read your Bible through from Genesis to Revelation. Okay, that's all I have for this study, guys. Make sure you share, like and subscribe and check out the um, the description box for uh, these um the passages that I go over and you just want to make sure you always look at the description box. I have a wealth of information in there usually. Okay. Till the next study.